You guys have a CR10S Pro and you're tired of listening to dial-up sounds when you turn your printer on? Or more importantly, you guys want to get full functionality out of your machine and firmware that's got a lot more features than what it ships with. Well, today I'm going to show you how to get rid of this and put the 12864 conversion kit on from TH3D. So, stay tuned. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure our printer is unplugged. I have it completely disconnected here. There's no AC power going into this machine. And to get into this big machine here, there's two screws on the side, on the left, and on the right in the bottom panel. I'm going to start by removing the side panel screws here. And now we have to get these bottom screws off. There's three on the bottom, three on the side, three on the top, and three more on this side. Now that all the screws are removed from the bottom panel, we can go ahead and pull it straight off. Now that we have the bottom cover off, we're going to take the stock screen out by removing these four screws here and disconnecting the ribbon cable. We're going to be using a two millimeter hex wrench to take these screws out. So before we remove the last screw, we're going to disconnect our data cable. And while this is a removable connector, this actually has locking tabs on it. So if you pull on this, you might actually pull the wires out. So I would recommend we just take the speaker out. And it'll come off with this bracket and just let it hang out right here. Disconnect the last cable and remove the last screw. Now, most of these screens seem to have this little gasket. We don't need this, so we can take that off. And now the printer's almost done and ready to accept our new display. So the next thing we need to do is assemble our new LCD. There's a printed cover, which you can get on our site. We offer them in PLA or ABS. The LCD itself with the cables. This is our 12864 LCD. And this is normal to have this repackaged because we open every single LCD and test it before shipping it to make sure there's no dead pixels and that it works correctly. And four M3 by eight screws. So let's go ahead and open the LCD. Take the screen out of the bag and the cables are going to be in this pouch here. Just make a slit, tear it open. And you'll find two cables and this is actually for a ramps board. We're not going to need this. You can just throw this away. And additionally, the knob for the LCD itself. So a couple of things I want to point out on this screen. There is an SD slot, but because Creality does not break the pins for this out to the expansion headers, this SD slot is non-functional and you will still use the one that's on your control board. The LCD enclosure that we have on the site actually doesn't even have a cutout here. And we did this to prevent confusion. The STL files for this are on our website if you don't want to have us printed for you. This is about an eight hour print. We print it standing up and we have supports coming up from the build platform to take care of this overhang. But installing this is really simple. Put the bottom end first. Make sure the encoder goes through the hole here. And then press the LCD into the housing. And you should have a nice flush fitment like this. And the last thing to do is put the four screws in to hold the LCD. So when we're installing the LCD into the housing, it's best to use a drill because we want to get these threaded into the plastic and it's hard to apply pressure while you're using a hex wrench. Once you start feeling resistance on it, just stop. You can do it by hand, it just takes longer, but we're threading these screws into the printed part. And there we go, all four screws are in. The LCD is flush on the front here. We can go ahead and put our knob on. It just presses onto there. Once you're done putting these in, you wanna make sure that the board's not bent too much. And you can see here, I over tighten this one a little. Just take your wrench and back it off a couple of turns just to relieve the tension on this. 
You're probably not going to damage it by over tightening it, but we don't want anything to short out because it's compressed too far. So if we look inside, we can see that there's minimal flex to the board and that's it. Our LCD is assembled. If you guys are wondering how this adapter actually works, this slides onto the top here and it will use the factory screw once we have the back plate on to connect the LCD to the printer. So what we want to do now is run our EXP1 and EXP2 cables to our board and connect the TH3D CR12864 adapter board to our EXP1 header. So I have our CR12864 LCD adapter board and this will plug into EXP1. Just like that. We'll connect the factory cable to the six pin header here. And now we'll go ahead and connect our 10 pin ribbon cables. So right here is EXP1. And this goes to our adapter board. EXP2 is below EXP1. And the other end of this goes to our LCD. Now, one thing to check before we close this up is we're going to plug USB in. Do not turn the power on at this point. We're going to make sure the LCD lights. Now, if you guys heard those little beeps, the LCD is not lighting up, which means that these cables need to be flipped. This is a common occurrence with these type of LCD screens because sometimes the cables that come with them are reversed depending on what machine they're going on. We're going to need to flip them. So we can either flip them here at the LCD or at the board. So since the LCD did not light, this board requires the cables to be flipped for this particular setup. So we're going to just take the cables, unplug them from the screen. You can see there's a locking tab here. Flip it around so the locking tab is up and then press it into the connector reversed. Do this for both of them. As you can see, it works just fine, even though these are backwards. But if you're having a hard time getting these tabs into the connectors reversed, you can actually trim it off. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Trimming these is really easy. You can see we have the locking tab right here and there's none on this side. Just take your flush cutters, put it on either side of the tab and squeeze. It's that simple. Now when I put this in, it goes right in with no resistance. I'll show you again right here. Put your flush cutters on either side of the tab and squeeze. It'll pop it right off. And that's it. Now if I plug my USB cable in, My screen is now lighting up and there's no beeping. So at this point, we're done inside the control box and we can put this all back together. Now, if you guys have some zip ties lying around, you can go ahead and grab your LCD cables and bundle them up. And now we can put the panel back on. So we're gonna do the same thing in reverse, except we're going to take this off and let it just hang out here. Put your panel back on. And bring your LCD back up. And you'll see that this screw hole lines up now. So to put that in, just go ahead and stick your screw through. And that's how the LCD mounts to the case. We just use the existing screw and put it through here. And this is now secure to the front of the printer. Okay, so the next thing you need to do now that we're all assembled is plug the mini USB into your computer. Open your web browser and head to firmware.th3dstudio.com and go ahead and click download latest firmware. 
your computer will then download a zip file. So we're gonna let that download and then I'm going to extract it. So I have the firmware opened up here. I'm going to just hit extract and you should put it somewhere that is a very low path in terms of the files. So in this case, I have my D drive. You can put it wherever you need. I'm going to extract it to a folder on my drive. Now all of my files are extracted and all we need to do is double click open firmware windows.bat. If you are on a Mac, there are directions in here along with how to set up the Arduino IDE for Macintosh. But since I'm on Windows, the easiest thing to do is just double click open firmware windows.bat and the firmware will load up in Arduino. So all you need to do is select the COM port your printer is on. In my case, I have a lot of serial ports. The easiest way to determine what your printer is on is to look at what you have. So in this case, I have 99, B0, 43, 12, and 58. Now that I've unplugged my printer, if I check ports, we'll see that 58 is gone. So my printer's on COM58. So go ahead and plug the printer back in and select the port the printer's on. For this board, this is going to use the Arduino Mega 2560 for the board selection and the processor should read AT Mega 2560. Now if you're using our firmware version and our Arduino IDE on Windows, these menu options are slimmed down. If you're using the standard Arduino IDE or on a Mac or Linux, you're gonna have a lot more options, so make sure you select the correct one. So now that we have the firmware open, select configuration.h at the top of your screen. And the easiest way to get to the Sierra 10S Pro section is to do a control F, which is fine. Type CR10S underscore pro and hit enter. And we're going to need to uncomment four lines for the stock configuration. It's important to note that this firmware only supports the LCD that we just installed. It does not support the touch LCD. So we're going to uncomment four lines. And what uncomment means is removing these two slashes right here in front of these defined statements. So delete, delete. And now I have the stock probe right now in the stock mounting location. So I need to tell the software that we're using the OEM mount, which is the stock mount the printer comes with. And I'm still using the stock ABL sensor. So if I now do a control S, which will save it, and you'll see the little dollar sign goes away after configuration.h, I'm ready to now upload the firmware. So go ahead and hit upload and this will take a minute or two to compile the firmware and then upload it to your printer. This printer does have the bootloader already flashed on it so we can upgrade right over USB. There's no need for an Uno with this particular model. Now our flash is successful and if we look over at the printer, we can see we have the text on the screen. I've gone ahead and plugged in power to my printer. I can see here that the printer is ready. I'm going to go ahead and press the button, go to prepare, auto home. Now our printer should home all the axes. So you can see our homing completed successfully. The last thing I highly recommend you guys do is reset the EEPROM on the printer. You can do this through sending G-code commands to your printer, or we can do it from the LCD like I'm going to show you now. To reset the EEPROM on your printer, you can press the menu button, go to control, scroll all the way down to reset EEPROM, reset EEPROM again, and you'll hear a beep. So I just got the confirmation beep, and I know my EEPROM's reset. Last thing to do is store those new settings and you'll hear a confirmation again. And that's it. We now have the TH3D Unified Firmware on our Sierra 10S Pro. We have no more touchscreen. You got baby stepping. You've got all sorts of options to set your acceleration, jerk, velocity, steps per millimeter, all right from your LCD screen. We even have the Z offset. So you can set your Z offset right from your screen here. Now that we're all done, the last step is the most important step, which is to peel the protective film. 
off the screen. And that's all there is to it. Now you got the new screen installed on your printer. You can get all the functions you're used to having if you've ever had a printer with this type of screen before. The touch LCD looks pretty and it's pretty simple to use. But once you start getting more and more into 3D printing, you'll see the value in having access to more of the menu options that the LCD that we just installed brings you, as well as the ease of adjustment when it comes to setting your probe offset. And that's even with the stock probe. If you guys are looking to add the easy ABL on there, there's another video on our channel that will show you how to remove the stock sensor and add on ours that completely bypasses all the Creality circuitry so we can get the best performance out of our easy ABL kit. If you guys have any questions, you can go ahead and give us a shout in the comments or through our live chat or even through the contact us link on our website. So if you guys don't want to buy the LCD housing from us, it's actually available on Thingiverse. And if you go to our product page that's linked below for that housing, there's a link to that Thingiverse link to print it. It took about eight hours to print on our machines here to point to layer height. So just keep that in mind. It is a little bit longer of a print and you do need to have supports under the overhang if you're going to print it in the orientation that we showed. In addition to the STL file, you will need four M3 by eight millimeter screws. But if you get the package that's also linked below, we include all the screws, the printed part, and the LCD with all the cables as one package for under $30. The adapter board we use to enable functionality of this screen is available in the link below separately. And that removes the requirement to have to solder onto your motherboard to get the data lines that are on that cable that normally go to the touch screen over to the new LCD. So it's a full plug and play installation that requires no soldering and just a little bit of your time. I hope this video was clear to show how to install this. And as always, happy printing.